Hello, welcome to episode 111 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 10th of April. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So we have some knitting, we have some sewing, we have some dressmaking as well but I'm including that in the sewing section, some cross stitch, I have a few confessions. Um, a question from the Ask Me Anything thread and some information on my shop update which is this evening at 7pm. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarn, project bags, stitch markers and higher higher knitting needles but also fabrics which I shall talk about a little bit later in the shop update section. So we have a couple of lovely craft alongs um, that are going on in the Ravelry group. So we have the What A Lot Of Potter Cal, which I'm doing in collaboration with lovely Becky from the Back To Blighty podcast. And it's basically all things out of this book, all Harry Potter projects. And there's so many lovely things in here. It's difficult to choose what to do, but I've been working on my scarf. I'll show you a little bit later on. We also have the spring shawl along um, which I started sort of last week and I've cast on a new shawl to show you um, and I've got a couple more that I want to cast on very soon so I shall talk about those a little bit later um, and I also wanted to mention that lovely Christine from the Sweet Lavender podcast has designed a beautiful pair of fingerless mittens called the Rainy Day Warmers um, and she's offered the podcast a copy uh, to give away as a prize and I was supposed to do it because I she offered me, me a while ago um, as the retro um, Mal but I'm going to actually do them for the pr one of the prizes um, for the spring shawl along instead but I shall show you a picture of those really lovely pretty pattern and Christine does a lovely podcast as well so go and watch her podcast which is called Sweet Lavender I'll leave links in the down bar as well for you so let's go on to the knitting so first of all what shall I show you first? Oh, I shall show you my my sweater that I've been, well, not sweater, I'm turning it into a cardigan. Um, so this is the Gwanwin sweater, and the pattern is by Verena Kors, and I've done the yoke. I'm very pleased with myself. It's difficult to show you because I've got it on smaller needles. I should have transferred them over. See if I can spread this out a little bit so you can see. Um, the light's coming through it a bit. Oh, that's a bit better. So you can see that there's a beautiful lacy cable pattern that actually was really intuitive to follow the charts that were with it. And uh, like you can see at the bottom here, I've just finished the charts and there's like um, a zigzag sort of shape at the very end. Um, and now there's lots of sort of shaping and plain knitting to do. But I'm so pleased that I've done the yoke bit Hopefully, once I've knitted a bit more, it'll be easier to properly show you. Uh, you can sort of see the pattern there, a bit scooched up. So it's a top-down sweater, but I'm turning it into a cardigan, and you can see that I've left uh, a gap of six, a gap of six stitches, so that I can sneak it afterwards and make it into a cardigan, because I know that I will wear a cardigan much, much more. So, like I said, it's called the Gwanwin sweater, which means spring in Welsh. Um, and Verena Kors is the designer, and the yarn that I'm using is my own hand dyed. So it's a DK that I'm using in the purple haze colourway, and I think that'll be lovely and wearable. Um, so hopefully I'll get some of the body done next time and then um, be able to wear it soon. Mind you, it's probably going to be a bit warm for the spring really, or coming into the summer. But who knows if I'll get it finished before the summer anyway. <laughs> So that's my first project I've got to show you. I have my Wizarding Transportation Scarf, which is a pattern out of the Knitting Magic book that I just showed you. So last time I'd done a bus, some broomsticks, the platform nine and three quarters. Let me just fold this in a better place so you can see it a little bit better. That's better. So we've got the buses, the broomsticks, platform nine and three quarters, another bus section, and this time, since the last podcast, I've done another broom section. So I'm actually just over halfway. I have, basically the pattern is this bit here, repeated three times, and I've done one repeat, um, and then I've just got this 
section to go and another whole repeat again so we're getting there slowly it is a thick thick scarf it's knitted in an aran weight yarn and it's knitted in a tube shape so that we've got color work in the round i'm using some 16 inch circular needles with four inch tips so that i can just keep working round and round and round i've got my little pandas on the end of my needles there um, to stop the stitches from coming off and i have a cute little progress keeper showing my beginning of the round um, i can't remember what shop that um this was from but my friend Jo sent it to me and i'll put the link to where she got it from for me um in the show notes thank you Jo. very very appropriate stitch marker <laughs> or progress keeper i should say so coming along nicely i have used i'm on my second ball of the background sort of bluey gray um yarn um, and it did say that you needed five skeins, but I don't think I'm going to use five skeins actually of those. I have got quite low on the purple rain colourway that I'm using for the bus buses, so hopefully I'll have enough. So this is my own hand dyed yarn in the purple rain colourway. That's for the buses. I've got walk it on sunshine for the, the broomsticks. The ordinary world for the background yarn. And because the night for the dark blue for where the um, platform nine and three quarters is um, and this is the merino iron weight yarn i sell in my shop and it's really nice and squishy to work with so really loving that um i can't wait to put the tassels on that's going to be fun <laughs> and it's living in my harry potter bag that i made um when we visited um warner brothers studios last year i think i made it especially to go <laughs> So that's my second project on the needles. I have a new shawl cast on as well. So this is going to be the Hokey Locatelli uh, Pure Joy shawl. And I've done quite a bit of it already considering I only cast it on um, a few days ago. So this is my own hand dyed yarn again. And it is in the Tell It To My Heart colourway, which is this one here. And just where the eyelets are, I've started to use the Love Shack colourway. So I'll show you them in the ball. Um, that's the colours in the cakes, so you can see what they look like a bit better. So there's the colours from um, Love Shack are also a little bit in Tell It To My Heart so that they blend together quite nicely. There's not too much of a contrast there. Um, and this, I'm using my Merino Nylon, 75% Merino, 25% Nylon, four ply base. And this pattern is basically going to be quite a crescent shaped shawl. And I've seen a few people have made um, versions of it and they're really lovely and long so that you can wrap them around a few times. So that's going to be lovely and wearable. So that's my first sort of shawl that I've got on the needles for the spring shawl along. But there are a couple more shawls that I want to cast on this week. So the two other shawls that I'm going to cast on, um, these two skeins are going to be the Slumber Shawl by Stephen West. Um, the top one is Smells Like Teen Spirit and the bottom one is Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now and I think that those will go together really nicely for that shawl. Um, and then I've picked eight skeins of yarn um, for the jigsaw puzzle shawl by Stephen West as well. I do love Stephen's patterns for shawls so I had to have two on my make nine list. And both of these shawls are on my make nine list for this year so that ticks a few things off. <laughs> so um, not to show too much of my arm. <laughs> <laughs> There's seven colourways there that I think go together really nicely and basically they're um, the colours that I've got in mini set four but with the addition of this sort of yellowy green which has come on Eileen. So this one's come on Eileen, that one, and then we have Rock Me Amadeus which has got blues, greens and purples in. Uh, we have Lucky Star which is a pale pink with some grey speckles in. Um, we have Holding Out for a Hero, we have Smells Like Teen Spirit and Don't Stop Us Now, which I've already showed you for that shawl, but I'm going to use them again in this one. Um, and then Tell It To My Heart Again, which is one of the ones I've cast on in for the Hohi Ho Locatelli shawl. Um, and then I think we're alone now. So it's those ones going together. 
I did show these last week but I didn't show that I was going to add that one to the mix because I think that makes quite a nice balanced uh, mixture of yarns for the shawl so I'm really excited to cast that on really shouldn't be casting them on all at once but do you know what they're on remake nine so it doesn't matter <laughs> And if I can get them sort of ticked off quite early in the year, then it's guilt-free casting on. <laughs> so that's my sort of knitting plans. Um, let's go on to the sewing section. So first of all, I have been working on the block that I started um, from the Jenny Raymond book. So this is the book that the block is from. And I've just put a marker in here to show you which pattern I chose. So I chose this one and I didn't particularly like the orange and green colours but I thought that that folded type of patchwork would go with the other block that I showed you a couple of weeks back. Oh, I might have showed it last week actually. So this is the block. Um, so hopefully that's focused in. So this is the block once the um, sections of the hexagons have been folded back. I haven't given it a proper press since I started to do the hand sewing on this but um, I'll have to give it a proper press before I start appliquing it onto the other panel but there we go. That's um, that piece of um, hand sewing done and I've just got to quilt the background piece and then start making the bag up with the other um, panel I showed you the other week. So that's that bit of sewing. I also have my Vogue coat which I've been working on. Barbara would you like to come through and show us how I've got on? Thank you very much Barbara. So Barbara is wearing my partially made Vogue coat which is the 90 three seven i think i'll put a picture on the screen <laughs> so this is the wool that i'm using but it has got a collar so i've literally just got the front and back panels sewn together with the darts and i've put the belt just on to hold it on together but this this it hasn't been hemmed or anything and also there's a collar that needs to go on and i needed to line it so the reason why i haven't finished it is that i had to order some lining that, that, to go with it a bit better than what i'd got in my stash uh, and i also needed some interfacing to do the collar bit so i just wanted to show you how i'd got on so far so at the moment this belt comes completely off um so it's just um a tube that's been um sewn into a rectangle um, and then top stitch down. I top stitched down all the way around the outside because I thought that would just make it a little bit sturdier because I think the wool is a little bit sort of stretchy if you're going to have it pulled out as a belt. This does, in the pattern it just says to make it and keep it separate but I might actually stitch it on um, just on the hips I think so that it doesn't get lost on that when I'm wearing it. Um, so on the front here there's, there's a point at the bottom both sides I'm not sure how well you can see that let's see if I can make Barbara a bit taller you can see that it's got two points at the front here which I think will be quite flattering um, obviously once I've sort of hemmed it properly and put all the lining in it'll look a little bit better there's some really unusual sort of darts around the side here so you just you're sewing the fabric just on this area and it just sort of opens out at the top and the bottom um, I did modify it slightly in that there was two of these but I just reduced it down to one just to make it um, more fitting to my shape and there's those darts at the back as well you can probably see them a little bit better on the back so you can see I've just stitched them along this part and then they just open out at the top and the bottom and this point is where the the belt would sort of go across anyway you can see that she's got um, my Disney top underneath <laughs> from last week she hasn't taken it off yet so these sleeves are three quarter length sleeves with this view a of the pattern um, it's not a very good picture I'll probably pop a picture on the screen but it's it's this one that I'm doing at the top view B I think oh no view A I'm doing so there is a larger collar if you wanted to but I think the sort of mid size collar would be more suited to my taste anyway um, so I have ordered and received some lining fabric from Ray Stitch which I'll show you in the confession section and also I bought some um, proper collar weight interfacing woven interface 
stone to do the collar with because I thought as I've spent quite a bit of money on this wool fabric and the lining and everything I try and do it as best as I can so it's made like a proper coat this is theoretical anyway <laughs> I will try but I am pleased with how it fits so far I thought I will just get the outside put together and make sure it actually fits me and then I'll think about what I'm going to do for the lining so the original pattern actually says um, just to put facing on the inside um, and not to line it fully but I think that I'll be happier with it if it is fully lined one it'll just sort of look more finished and two it is quite an itchy fabric and if I had that against my skin if I wore sort of a t-shirt underneath it I think that would irritate my arms so um, I think it's best if I line it properly so I shall show you the lining in a bit. Thank you very much, Barbara. So hopefully get that finished by next week, fingers crossed. Um, we have a slightly longer weekend, so I should have a little bit more crafty time. So <laughs> I have some cross stitch to show you next. So a couple of weeks ago, I said that I do a little bit of cross stitch every week. I didn't show you last week because I haven't done an awful lot. But I've done a quite a bit more this week to show you. So I can show you two weeks of work. Um, I've basically done half of this tree, really, and put all the, the little flowery bits on it or blossom or whatever it is on this bit of tree here so in the coming weeks i'm going to try and do little things like these each week that so that'll be easier to sort of break down that's what it looks like so far hopefully that's focusing properly um but the pattern is a vintage pattern i got from a charity shop and this is what the pattern is supposed to look like in the end so I've sort of done just that bit there but I haven't done the writing on the top of that section I'll probably do that bit next but there's some cute little figures um, on the next bit here so that's coming along nicely a few people have sent me photographs to say that they've finished theirs uh, so that's a lovely bit of inspiration to see um, how it can how it could look like if I actually got it finished and framed <laughs> So that's coming on okay i am feeling very inspired to do um some more embroidery and stitching and that because i've been watching davina um from the little workroom crafts podcast and she's been doing some lovely sort of hand sewing little um hexagons and things like that so i really need to use my inspiration and make something that's hopefully lovely <laughs> um anyway right what have i got on my list to talk about next i have some confessions so i after i'd made my indigo top a couple of weeks ago i've now seen that tilly and the buttons have released an extension pack so there's different sleeves and a um basically a shorter fluttery sleeve as well as a long sleeve more slimline one um, and then you can convert the dress into a very sort of long maxi dress which is quite nice um, and also an extension bit that you can have um, buttons down the back um, of the top which I think was really lovely so I've purchased that and there was a 10% off code I noticed on the website which was digital 10 um, because I bought the digital copy which is always good <laughs> so that was on the Tilly and the Buttons website um, I from what I can see is that um, code must be valid for at least um, a few more days because that's been up there a while anyway so if you were going to be purchasing something from the Tilly and Buttons website it's worth um, using the code and I also noticed that to sew over it for this weekend we're doing a 25% off as well so um, if you were thinking about purchasing dress patterns um, there is a 25% off this weekend so that's good I haven't bought anything yet but I might do we'll see <laughs> um I have got some fabric that I was talking to you about from my coat so this is the interface in which is a a posh um tailor's interfacing that's used especially for collars so it basically feels like quilter's cotton but a 
it's iron on as well um so i've got a meter of that ready to do my color of my coat and i picked this gray um poly cotton fabric to do the lining with because poly cotton is quite slidey so i can sort of get my arms in the sleeves nice and easy and also it wasn't too expensive as well um because by the time you buy wool for a coat um i think it was 50 pounds already so with the interfacing and the lining that's another 20 pounds so it costs a fortune to make coats <laughs> this is why i haven't made one before but it's not even a proper coat it's a jacket but we can see so that was from ray stitch and it came in this cute little bag um and they've got some really nice jersey fabrics i noticed as well i will leave a link to ray stitch in the down bar um if you want to have a look at their website so I had a beautiful parcel through the post. Um, I didn't actually must have had it last week before the last podcast, but I, because I've been popping everything in the conservatory um, in quarantine for 72 hours before I actually opened things. Um, it just sort of waited there, but I opened it the other day and it was absolutely beautiful parcel. So it was from lovely Alison from Huddersfield and she sent me this gorgeous card and it's like a photograph of houses at the beach, um, but they they look like they've been quilted. So that's really pretty. Thank you, Alison. And this beautiful bag that looks like it's hand printed full of her mum's bobbin lace um, bobbins. Let's get a few out here to show you. And they're absolutely gorgeous. So it was jam-packed full of these. And uh, they're I just love these wooden bobbins. They're absolutely beautiful. Let's pick a couple out to show you. So there's this um ebony one, I think, with some wire wrapped around it, which is really pretty. Um, there's this light wood that's all twisted which I think is really pretty um, with beautiful little beads on it and a sixpence isn't that sweet with these beautiful turned ones as well so thank you so much Alison they will be well used so I've got my ask me anything question now so lovely George was asking me what overlocker um, do I suggest that she gets if she's looking for an overlocker? I did quite a bit of research about, I think it was probably about four or five years ago when I got mine, um, and I discovered that the, well, the ones that were slightly cheaper, I felt they were a bit rickety when I had a go at them in the shops. So I went into some of these, um, like sewing machine shops so that I could have a go and had a look in sort of John Lewis and different places um, and I decided that the ones that were the very cheapest price point seemed a little bit not very sturdy to me so I wanted to pay just a little bit more but not too much um, and I actually looked into the Juki um, and it's an M0654 DE model um, and at the time it was the sort of second one down because the top one was like it's threaded with air pressure which was amazing but I thought I don't need that <laughs> I think I paid about 400 pounds for my overlocker but um and I think the cheapest ones come at about 200 um but this one really seems like it's it's nice and easy to thread relatively easy to thread because there are four um places that you need to put your thread through um but it's nice and easy to thread um in terms of following the instructions in the booklet um and it just seems to work really well i've used it quite a lot now and i'm pleased that i got that model apparently it's the same um insides of the machine as another bernina that they have um but i ended up buying the juki in the end just because um i don't know actually they're basically the same machine anyway and it was a slightly lower price point where I got it from from a, a machine shop local to me what I plan on doing is a little video to show what my different machines do in terms of stitching so that you can sort of understand what different machines are for um, so I hope to get that um, out to you before the next podcast as well so watch out for that but thank you for the good question George um, I hope that's helped you a little bit um, of course there might be some better models now um whether you could get better price points on some of them i don't know but at four years ago or five years ago um that was the best one that i could sort of find for a reasonable price point 
So I've just got my shop update next um, and I'm very excited to be introducing some fabrics for sale in the shop. So they're going to be cut um, at half metre increments but if you buy uh, two half metre increments you'll get a metre in one length if that makes sense. So uh, there'll be a separate section in my shop and of course um, if you wanted to I've got a pattern for how I make my bags and then you could buy some fabric um, to make your own if you wanted to so at the moment I'm just introducing the patterned fabrics I'm not doing solids at the moment but I might do the solids in the future um, if you'd like to see those um, but there'll be a separate section on the website you can find them all and have a look um, if you want to buy some fabric to make other things apart from bags so I'll be also updating some of my progress keepers and stitch markers so there'll be uh, more options on my website as well as an additional size of lobster clasp or progress keeper size so at the moment I've got the small ring and large ring stitch markers as well as the lobster clasp choice or the lever back um, clasp but now I'm introducing a larger lobster clasp as well as the lever back clasp as well so there's pictures to show you um, what exactly they'll look like but just gives you more choice really um so there we go i think that's everything for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more and i shall see you on the next episode bye